So cold. Can't feel my heidi. Hello friends and welcome to another video. This week, we're gonna be staying in a glass igloo in the Arctic Circle. I think it's gonna be kind of like glamping, but really, really, really cold. Now, as some of you guys may know, we've been on a bit of a strange hotel or unusual accommodations kick. See our recent video about staying in a hotel made completely of ice? I said, hey, let's hit the slab. <laughs> And this week, we are tackling something that I've been seeing on the internet for years, the glass igloos in Finland, that people stay in to view and sleep under the northern lights. I think I've been seeing videos and photos of them on my Instagram and TikTok feed since at least 2020, and I've always wanted to go and try them out. First off, they look really, really pretty. I've never seen the northern lights before, and I've also never stayed in a human-sized terrarium before, but they look so cute and cozy and covered in snow in every picture I see of them. Which leads me to wonder, are they cozy? Is it freezing cold in there? What's it like in there? What is there to do in there? And how do you even get there? All questions we will answer in this video. Because during our recent Nordic slash Scandinavian travel trip, we decided to stop in Finland to stay in a glass igloo, sleep under the stars, and figure all this out. And hopefully see some northern lights in the process. Any any at all. Even just one single light would be fine. Also, this does mark the end of our Nordic slash Scandinavian series, so comment down below where you think we should travel to next. Okay, let's go. Finland, here we come. Now, the last time you guys saw us, we were leaving the Ice Hotel in Northern Sweden. All right, goodbye Ice Hotel. See you on the flip side. Yeah. Well, it's gonna melt but the next one. After a stop in Iceland to soak up some minerals in the Blue Lagoon and a brief unplanned stint in Stockholm, and we were ready to turn our eyes to the final leg of our trip. All right, shall we? Yes. Onward and eastward to Finland. Now, both the Ice Hotel and the Glass Igloos are located in a general region in the far north of the Scandinavian peninsula called Lapland. And though they are theoretically close to each other, getting from one place to the next was not quite as simple as I thought it would be. The easiest flight path would be Karuna to Stockholm, Stockholm to Helsinki, and then Helsinki to Ivalo. But as we know, flights to and from the far north only run on certain days, so we decided the fastest thing to do would be to drive six hours across Sweden in Finland. An ambitious plan, to be sure. There's our route. The drive is actually pretty beautiful, with lots and lots of snow-covered trees as far as the eye can see. And after a few hours driving, we reached the Finnish-Swedish border, which was notably pretty uneventful. Finland. You kind of take a left and cross a bridge, and then you're just in Finland. You don't have to the scenery then stayed pretty much the same, though we did notice the temperature start to drop rapidly, a sign of things to come. It's negative 13 degrees Celsius. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cold. It is, it is pretty cold, yeah. Good thing we're sleeping in a glass tent. And after a solid six hour drive, we finally arrived at our destination. Oh, I'm seeing stuff, guys. Oh, Are you seeing stuff? Yeah, I'm seeing stuff. You got some stuff? It's happening, people. Now, though there are a fair amount of other glass igloos out there, the original and I think most famous glass igloos are located at the Kekslautnen Arctic Resort. <laughs> And when we arrived at Kaxlautnen that evening, we were greeted by a large log cabin. My nose hairs are freezing. <laughs> oh, they are, mine too. It's a very specific sensation, but yeah. it's happening. Which contained the main lobby, front desk, gift shop, and restaurant. Look, unique Pringles flavors. Spring onion and Texas barbecue. With some nice Taylor Swift playing softly over the whole scene. Yeah, if there's one thing I know about Finns, they're big Swifties. <laughs> doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter if you're in the Arctic Circle. Taylor Swift will be there. And after checking in, we loaded our luggage on one of these sleighs that were lined up outside of the lobby. Do we need uh, more sleighs? What's up? I'm going to listen to our headlamp. <laughs> and started pushing. Now I have the headlamp on. I am the proverbial Rudolph. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is it falling? Yeah, it's falling. Okay, let me try again. Now, the idea of a luggage sleigh is cute and fun, but the glass igloos are pretty far away from the lobby. Actually, everything at this resort is pretty spread out, and it was super cold out there. Yeah, there's a left there. That could be it. <sighs> Oh my God. So it was both exhausting and also my hands were freezing to the sleigh. Oh, oh, I see them. Oh, it's a lot of pills off. This is where the change happens. Do I check in? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold. I want igloo. I want to get in my glass tent, please. But after quite the trip. 37. Yep, got it. Oh, I see Mosa. Holy sh it's cold. We finally laid eyes on our igloo. This is us. Okay, 37? Yeah. All right, after you. Oh. Oh. 
Lights, lights. And first impression, it was looking pretty awesome in there. Oh, come on in. Ooh. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Wow. Oh. But after a long drive and a long trek, my fingers are frozen. It's nice in here. Everything is zebra themed. Oh yeah. For some reason. Yeah. Um, let's get our stuff in. Let's regroup. That was cold. <laughs> we were pretty ready to crash, so we'll give you guys the full tour in the morning. We have a busy couple days here. Good night. Good night. Good night. Look at me and my zebra. <sighs> it's vaguely erotic. It is kind of erotic. All right, Tyler's gonna turn the lights off because you can't turn the lights off from your bed. No. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. So the next morning, having returned to the world of the living. You know, this whole uh, sun rising at like 10 a.m. thing works pretty well for me. <laughs> Usually I never see the sunrise. And having grabbed a little breakfast at the main lodge. These things will wreck you. Everyone thinks those are orange juices. The ginger shots, and they're intense. We can start giving you guys the lowdown. Starting with the things that brought us here in the first place, the glass igloos, which are all over here in this like little village together. Home sweet home. I like how we have our sled parked out front like it's ours. <laughs> it's like our car in our driveway. <laughs> the igloo that Tyler and I had was the larger deluxe igloo. Ooh, you can see right through. Oh, come on in. All right. I'm coming. Ta da! And most of the body of the igloo is just this open dome back here, which contains some carpeting and a number of beds. I think it's actually quite comfortable in here. It's super warm. Like, it's not cold at all. Like, it's very heated. There is also a toilet room in here near the front entrance that is divided from the rest of the igloo by this frosted glass. So you can see Sophia's shadow. Hello there. So it's a little bit intimate. And the deluxe igloo has its own shower as well. It's a little wet because I was in here earlier. Fair. Come on in. You can't really come in because no. there's only really one room for one person. This is not a bad shower. Which is a pretty awesome convenience and kind of elevates the glass tent situation a little bit above glamping in my opinion. Now we were able to take a peek at a standard smaller glass igloo as well. Oh God, this door is so short. I know. Come on in. All right. Which was pretty similar, just with fewer beds. Still has the zebra motif going on. Big time. Can't lose the zebras. And did not have its own shower room. Though the smaller igloo did have its own luggage compartment. Like. That's like a whole hidey hole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I thought was actually pretty awesome, since you are a little strapped for storage space in there. And then one thing that both tents have is an aurora alarm, which means that like, if the northern lights are out, they will do like a wake up alarm. To be like, wake up right now, look up. <laughs> and overall, comparing my expectations from Instagram to experiencing them IRL, I would say the glass igloos are actually pretty cool. They don't necessarily feel super luxe, like there's a strange amount of zebra print and some kind of random decor choices, but they're pretty cozy. And obviously the giant ceiling slash window gives you a great view of the sky and the surrounding areas. And we did see some cool stuff, which we'll talk about later. There's Tyler doing stuff. What is this move? What's going on here? But one drawback of having a great view is that you can also easily be viewed. Someone left their bathroom light on. They did. This is a more prominent issue at night when the insides of the tents are lit up. All right, we're, we're seeing Tyler. What? <laughs> and you can uh, quickly get to know your neighbors. You're new. I definitely have flashed people. I definitely have walked past tents that are illuminated looked into them and been like, oh, well, that person's naked. And let's be real, these curtains are really not doing much of anything at all. So that's just a dynamic. Not something that's gonna turn me off of glass igloos forever, but just something to keep in mind. All right. Let's keep rolling. Now we mentioned earlier that Kexlautin Resort's glass igloos are the original glass igloos. Look at the little turtles. With the vibe of the resort being about showcasing the natural beauty of Arctic Finland, owner and operator Juicy Arimo constructed the first glass igloo in 1999. They do look like turtles. Am I not turtle enough for the uh, turtle club? Well, you're in the turtle. 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 And they're not gonna let you forget it because they are a major architectural theme of this resort to the point where they just add a little glass terrarium slash greenhouse to every building they possibly can. Oh, wow. It's covered in snow. As you can see with their igloo bar that's at the back of their main lobby building. I can see myself getting drunk in a terrarium. I'm down for it. Yeah. Or their Kello glass igloos, which are like half cabin, half greenhouse. This is like a mutant. It's like a cabin tent hybrid. And their luxury multifamily lodges, which have little glass igloos like jutting out of them. You know what's uh, conspicuously missing? What? The zebra print. Just saying. And most over the top of all, they've also created this giant glass igloo mushroom. Here's the tower. That sits loftily at the top of this art gallery. Oh, 
Wow! Okay, we almost didn't come here. This is worth it. Yeah. <laughs> With Kexlautenen, it's all glass all the time. Look at all those trees! Look at all them trees! They've got a lot of trees, and they're not afraid to show them to you. Now, finally, moving past the glass, there is actually a fair amount more stuff here at the Kexlautenen Resort. It oh. looks like they're using that little hill as like a sledding hill. Oh, damn. Oh, wipe out! <laughs> to be brief, it is a full-on winter wonderland. I go for a tie. And they offer pretty much every cute wintry Arctic activity you may have seen on your Instagram or TikTok or YouTube Shorts feeds for their guests to participate in. Oh! Is there a secret bump? There's a secret bump, yeah. Somewhere over there is my ass print. Like Northern Lights watching expeditions, reindeer sleigh rides, dog sledding, and traditional Finnish saunas. And so we were there for three nights to try and speed run most of them. Ah! Ah! I was so scared of the secret bump. Oh my God, I'm covered in snow. And I'm gonna start off with their Santa stuff. It's not really an activity, but it's very prominent. Oh yeah, it's the way into Santa. It's like a sponge, like a scrubbing sponge. It's kind of cute, actually. Like they call themselves Santa's Resort. They sell Santa merch. They have this big Santa's Village area. I like how Bing Crosby is just emanating from the building. With an elf tower. The two towers, the mushroom tower and the elf tower. And an elf bridge. And then this is Santa's house. And though we did have some fun trying to figure out how the terrarium vibes fit with Santa. He knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. How does he know? He watches from this tower, the all seeing eye of Santa. Yeah. I guess it makes sense. It's good for tourism and being in the Arctic Circle, there are probably only a handful of full service resorts that are any closer to the North Pole. Yeah, the birth of baby Jesus and Santa right over there. Though it does seem like there are a few spots in Finland that are vying for this title, so I cannot confirm if Kexlautenen is officially Santa's resort or not, but they're trying their best. However, back on the activity train, starting with an Arctic classic, Kexlautenen does offer a reindeer safari for their guests to go on. Hello, sir. And we were chomping at the bit to try this one out. This is Coco. Yeah. First up, you have to suit up with even more Arctic gear because it's cold out there. Oh, uh, you look reindeer ready. What do you think? You look cute. And yes, this suit goes over your parka, so you are like super bundled. How you doing? And then you get to ride in a sleigh, Santa style. This is sick. They're so cute. <laughs> now, reindeer are a natural fit for Kexlautnin. Can you see him? Yeah. <laughs> He's right there. As they're native to northern Scandinavia. Here we go. This is fun. And the Sami people who are indigenous to the region were the first to herd and domesticate the reindeer. So it kind of ties into the history of the area. And in fact, this safari and the reindeer on the Kaxlautnen Resort are managed and taken care of by Sami reindeer experts. Oh, and he's right here, isn't he? Oh, hey, dude. <laughs> he's looking right at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> wants to eat it. I really like the reindeer safari. It's so pretty, man. The reindeer themselves are super cute, and although the sleigh ride is not particularly fast, it's fun. This is fun. I declare this fun. It is a very tranquil and pleasant jaunt through the beautiful Finnish woods. 1 p.m. sun in Finland. The only negatives are that it is a lot of staring at your reindeer friend's butt. Just uh, staring down his nether eye. Completely. <laughs> Exclusively. <laughs> trying to avert my gaze. Trying to be respectful. Yeah, they're trying to zoom in over his head. And after a bit, it does get pretty cold in there, since the reindeers are doing all the work and you're pretty stationary. Yeah. We don't want our fingers to be like Prince Harry's penis. <laughs> Gotta warm them up. That story was not a good way to tell us right before you left. No. Uh, not gonna have one. But then at the end, you get to warm up with some hot cider and cookies inside a traditional Sami style hut called a coda. Oh, yeah. Now, after the reindeer, I am warmed back up. And my nose hairs are frozen again. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. The next Arctic activity we tackled was the traditional Finnish sauna and icy cold plunge pool. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Not it being a hole in the ice with like a spotlight on it. <laughs> And by plunge pool, I mean a ladder directly into this frozen pond. So yes, it was time for us to go winter bathing. I don't think anyone thinks we can hang. No, but we're gonna do it. We might not be able to hang, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try. All right, let's go get changed. Yeah. Saunas are a pretty big thing in Finland. There are approximately 3 million saunas in a country of only about 5 million people. Hello, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm coming up. And though there are different types, the general idea is that it's a hot room that you sit in to sweat it out and relax. Oh, it's smoky as heck, man. It's really hot in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a smoke sauna, which means there's no chimney. Rather, the steam and smoke that rises from this hot oven stays in the room with you. Oh. 
And that's how you make it even hotter. Oh my God, I can feel it. And generally, I don't think people usually have their iPhone flashes on in here. Sorry that this looks totally terrifying, guys. I swear in person, it's a bit more uh, rustic and charming. But without it, I couldn't see anything I was filming. Yeah, not Salem witch trial -y. It's a little crucible right now. And then once you are sufficiently roasted, put a timer on for two minutes. Final cooking. Two okay. minutes. And then we're going. You need to cool off. Ready? After you. I'm ready. And by cool, I mean really cool. This is f***ing crazy. <laughs> I leave the socks on, right? Yeah, socks on. Are we serious right now? As it was freezing pond water time. I'm so scared. How do I do it? Just go in. Ah! You got it, sweet. I'm gonna cry. Okay. Since traditionally, you're supposed to go between very hot and very cold multiple times during your sauna session. Here you go. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Grab okay. that towel. Okay. Book. Okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay. I'm leaving. There are supposed to be some health benefits to this besides just hazing non Finns who aren't used to the cold. Oh, 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 oh. So cold. Ice bathing is supposed to improve mood and energy, reduce blood pressure, and decrease stress. All right, now we go back in the sauna, right? Yeah, sauna, 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 sauna. Oh, it's nice and warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the transition between hot and cold and hot again is said to even help maintain skin elasticity. That wasn't so bad, actually. And keep you looking young and fresh. I feel pretty good right now. I feel pretty good right now. <sighs> Round two, baby. Round two, baby. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Most people do two to three rounds of hot saunaing and ice bathing. I'm not going further. And honestly, even though it was kind of extreme. Good to go. I'm good? good okay, go. we're done. Good Goodbye. Go. That was deep. That was deep. Yes. All right, me. This, down, soft, hair, take, go, pro, go. <gasps> we ended up actually really liking the sauna experience. Into the abyss, once more. The sauna itself is just a really hot room. The hole in the ice is really what intimidated me going in, but I found it to be pretty exhilarating. Ah! Hello, how's it going? Ah! Woo! 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 I missed the pad, I missed the pad. What does that mean? I stepped in the snow. Why did you do that? It's an accident. <laughs> into the sauna again. So smoke sauna, two frozen thumbs up. Before I was in, I was terrified. When I was in, I hated it. Now that I'm out, I'm like, that was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> so besides reindeers and saunas, we did try a couple more activities at Kexlautenen, <laughs> including a snowmobile riding expedition slash caravan on night two. We'll see if we get a tutorial about how to drive. <laughs> where you're basically plopped on a snowmobile. Hell yeah, man. Hello. Hello, friends, and welcome to this snowmobile. Oh my goodness. Holy oh, You got this time. Woo! <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. And you get to drive pretty darn fast through the Finnish woods. Can you guys see the snow sparkling? It's so cute. It is so cute. Tyler and I drove on one together, and it was pretty exhilarating. I felt like a real Arctic biker chick. Hit the nose, baby! Three, two, one! Windshield wipers. Oh my god, you're serious. <laughs> or kind of like a very insulated version of Justin Bobby and Audrina from the hills. Doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Wins winning. Tom Trato, baby. And then the other activity we participated in was dog sledding on night three, where you can actually steer and ride on a dog sled. I'm gonna save the bulk of that story for later in the video because it's a bit climactic, but we did also get to actually meet the sled dogs at their farm during the day. Look at that guy on his house. What's up, dude? Which obviously was one of my favorite things that we did at the resort. Look at him. Look at his little ear. 10 out of 10, no notes. They are so cute and so crazy. It's funny because like right now, the activity is just to look at the dog. Oh yeah. And everyone's down. We've all just gathered here today to film these dogs. What's up, dude? Like Jailbreak. <laughs> now, one of the other big draws of this resort is getting to see the Northern Lights, but it's never a sure thing, even in the winter. The most obvious thing you can do is just chill in your glass igloo once the sun has gone down and hope for a stroke of luck that you'll be able to see them. And we lucked out pretty much right after we had arrived. Hold on, hold on. Holy sh! that's them. On our first night at Kexlautenen, we saw some auroras through the glass roof in our tent. We're gonna go put on our jackets and go outside. They're literally moving. Put my pants on. Put my pants on. So we ran out with my hands half frozen to admire the auroras as they appeared above our heads. Ooh. Oh my god. And it was pretty surreal to see them dancing around like right above our igloo. Holy crap. Like 
That's our tent right there. So value prop of the glass igloos, confirmed. We also did get to see some auroras during our snowmobiling expedition on our second night. We got some Northern Lights action. Oh damn, we really, really do. Which is at least part of the reason why they send you on these expeditions at night, to get you to prime aurora viewing spots. That's them, baby. I'm talking about auroras, baby. At first, our guide thought they were just okay, but we got to see some color changing. Damn. That one's pretty legit. Some light beams dancing. They're moving. Whoa! They're moving, dude! They're zooming, dude! And even she admitted after our second sighting, they were a solid 9 out of 10. Okay, now it's pumped up to a 9. Yeah! What do you think about that? That's pretty good. Now I will say, we aren't Northern Lights filming experts. That's Tyler in the tent. I think he's trying to get the headlamp for some reason. Ah! But we tried our best, so hopefully some of these different shots can show you guys kind of what the auroras that we saw looked like. <laughs> look like I'm in a horror movie. <laughs> we stopped, we've seen more Northern Lights. They're really pretty, we like them a lot. We've taken some time lapses, some photos, and we've been given some juice, which is really, really doing it for me. Now on our third night, which is when we went dog sledding, conditions were pretty cloudy and snowy, so we weren't able to see any Northern Lights. Holy wow, it's snowing. <laughs> Can you guys see that? But that was the least of our problems. Unfortunately, as our trip to Finland was coming to a close. I got food poisoning. <laughs> Nice. I just took a modium, so if I fall asleep, I'm drowsy, that's why. Tyler caught some kind of stomach bug, so he had to stay back in the igloo. Okay, so Tyler wasn't feeling too well, but me and Melissa are going dog sledding. So it ended up being just me and our producer Melissa on the sled. So there's gonna be your team, Taxi and Ursus, Gimli and Eddie, and your leaders, Ibiza and Bolt. Now overall, the dog sledding experience is objectively cool. Oh, we're just going? We're going. Good luck to everyone. We're going! You go in pairs of two, and one person gets to steer the dog sled, and one person gets to ride in it, Balto style. They did a great job! Look at them going! Now, the dogs are super cute, and it is a pretty one of a kind experience, and of course, the nature is beautiful. Woo! <laughs> but the terrain is kind of bumpy, and you can feel pretty much every bump in the sled. Woo! Woo! What if I fall off? <laughs> is it hard to hold on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the dogs know that you are a tourist who doesn't really know what you're doing, so they're kind of in their own zone. They know the path and they want to run. Oh my god, they're having a blast. Yeah. They're like, why are you guys being such wimps? So you're not so much in control of the sled as you are hanging on for dear life. Woo! 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 I'm getting blasted down here. And riding the brake occasionally so you don't fly off. How are you still on? I don't know. <laughs> like literally what happens if I fall off? If you fall off, scream. Okay. Well, I guess I'm a goner too. Yeah, if I fall off, I don't know what you do. <laughs> nope, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm done. Now, it turns out that we all eventually got that stomach bug that took Tyler down, and we started dropping like flies, with the bumping and jumping of the sleigh taking Melissa down first, who had been driving while I filmed. So I might drop. Okay, excuse me, can we stop? Thankfully, I wasn't taken down by whatever we all got until the next day on our flight back to the US. All right, I'm gonna drive. <laughs> so I was able to swap with her and we turned back around and took the dogs back home. <laughs> yep, it's interesting, guys. Hello, I am a light, a lamp. Hello. So, dog sledding. It was certainly an experience. I think I'm more cut out for dog petting, so I think I'll stick to that. All right. An adventure. <gasps> yes. <laughs> So that generally was our stay at the glass igloos in Finland. Overall, I think we had a really good time. I thought the glass igloos themselves ended up being pretty comfortable and easy to stay in, besides the neighbor flashing dynamics. And I also really enjoyed the activities. Like I got to do a bunch of stuff I never really thought I'd be able to try, like reindeer slaying and snowmobiling, and of course, getting to see the Northern Lights a bunch of times. Successful trip, toes cold. Uh, let's get you inside. Which is kind of one of those once in a lifetime things that makes a trip like this worth it. Some sick hot chocolates, man. No, good day. Nice. Good day. Obviously, on the not so good side, there was the mysterious stomach bug that took us all down, but I don't want to blame Kaxlautnen for that necessarily. And then the only other thing I really want to call out as a negative were the luggage sleighs. Those, like, luggage sleighs are kind of my sworn enemy. They look so frozen. They are. Yeah. They are frozen. It makes sense why they're used, since it would probably be impossible to wheel your suitcases over the snow and ice, but they're not very easy to steer, and they're very cold. And it seems like the other guests agree. Oh no. 
That sleigh is out for the count. As we encountered abandoned luggage sleighs in the creek. Someone just gave up. In the creek again. And yep, those are also in the creek. Look at those multiple sleighs underneath the bridge. Yeah. Don't worry, we did not abandon our sleigh in the frozen creek and did in fact return it to its proper place. I pushed that thing in here, so you're gonna push us out. Fair. Let's get loaded up. As we used it to slide our bags back to the main lobby for checkout. Woo! There's a little hill over here. I'm riding all the way down, baby. But glass igloos, a check. Northern lights, a check. And stomach bug be damned. Oh, he's gone. He's going, going, gone. Our lengthy expedition to the Arctic Circle had come to an end. All right, it's time to go home. And we won't speak of what happened on the plane because it wasn't pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Here are our short form slash social media handles, and here's our merch website. And with that, I will see you guys a next time.